Monsieur Sigimoto, mm -hmm. what, uh, what is your relation to Giacometti? Well, long time when I first saw the Giacometti, I was quite impressed. That was maybe when I was in Japan, a uh, college student. Ah. Yes. I, I've seen it somewhere in one of the museum that uh, I was studying uh, philosophy uh, and then also including the French philosophy of existentialism that oui. time. Yes, <laughs> and which, did... which, which was born in this neighborhood precisely uh -huh. because Jean-Paul Sartre was in this neighborhood. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it uh, matched. Yeah, the coupon <laughs> that they used to use. Exactly. <laughs> Well, uh, this lunch, I had a good bowl lunch, so. Yes. And then when I was reading Sauto, he quite often mentioned about the Giacometti. So that's why I get to know Giacometti. Ah, okay. And so. And what was your first feeling about the sculpture? Uh -huh. You saw first sculpture, right? Of Giacometti. Uh, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly the same as this wall walking man or standing man, either one, but. Uh, I saw it. Yes. And well, it was such a skinny sculpture. And uh, as a, as just the quality of the sculpture, something strong, kind of spiritual behind it, which I, 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 I felt. Kind and of magic? That kind of ma magical. A sense. It's not like uh, other sculpture, like a Rodin, Rodin or you know, it's very figurative, but this is a figurative, but uh, something different. It's, it's, I felt like uh, it's, it's talked to me, my Japanese some, somehow. Ah, that's interesting. Yes. Um, so uh, it didn't remind me the, the Japanese theater, like a no theater, but now more and more. I, I happened to connect the Giacometti sculpture to a, to a Japanese uh, theater, like and the no theater. Yes, and so you first did some photos of the sculpture yes. to kind of mm -hmm. um, take mm -hmm. the spirit in them. Take a spirit out of the, the shape, okay? So I even made the Giacometti sculpture even thinner because of the spirit. <laughs> Ah, how can you make them thinner? To, to make it uh, give a double infinity focus. This is my technical term. Okay. So I, I, usually in photography, uh, when you focus in infinity, that's the far, as far as the, the, uh, the distance that you can go. Yes. But in my huge 8x10 box camera, I can go beyond, beyond the infinity. Uh, wow! I, I, I call Further it than Brancusi. As, it's a kind of Brancusi concept. Twice as infinity. There's no such place. Wow, that's great. Yes. I love it. Symbolically, it's, it's very, very strong. Symbolic, yes. And then, so this is a show of my Twice as the Infinity but of Giacometti. When did you do that? Uh, it's written in my catalog. Yes, but uh, several years ago. Several, well, oh, five, six, six years ago. The MoMA commissioned me to photograph the MoMA's sculpture garden. Ah. And then the first, first sculpture I, I, I pay attention is the sculpture the Giacometti. There's a many, many sculpture in the sculpture garden, but, uh, but uh, yeah, Giacometti is number one. It stand out. It's the most impressive and strong sculpture among the modern sculpture. And There's uh, a Henry Moore and yes. many others, but I, I, I usually challenge the, the most strong one first. So if I can compete with uh, Giacometti, <laughs> I can win. <laughs> <laughs> and so did you win with Giacometti? I don't know whether I lost or win, but uh, I, I did a beautiful job. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, did you catch the, the ghost in the statues? I, yeah, as you can see it, my, my, my photograph. But your feeling inside yeah. yourself, do you yes, think yes, you yes. catch the ghost? I, I catch the ghost. And then 
I've read many uh, texts by Giacometti and John June and Salto, and ah. uh, uh, well, I discovered that uh, Giacometti is trying to steal the spirits from the live person. Okay, so this is a double, exactly double your work. spirit, double spirit story, twice stolen spirits. Mm. And, and um, <clears throat> why did you did you see did you put a seascape at the end of the show? Ah, uh, because I'm trying to to steal the spirits from the sea as well, or for other in other word, like I'm trying to re memorize the the spirits of early human being maybe related to the experience of first human seeing the seascapes and then aware of himself or herself mm. while well, i'm human well where is the space comes from but but he came from the mountain giacometti he was very close uh -huh. to the mountain and to the dark mountain Ah, I see, dark mountain. Yeah. Like a black forest in Germany? Uh, like, no, no, <laughs> he came from the Swiss, Swiss, one, right. Swiss mountain. Yes, yes. He S never see the sea? Of course Maybe. he saw the yeah. sea, mm -hmm. but uh, that's interesting. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> what, how do you think there's a link with the s no theater? No theater? Uh, yes, so the, the no theater is uh, the, the calling back the dead spirit to be a uh, the contemporary moment. So uh, trying to, to steal the, uh, the speed, uh, or trying to, to make a death speed back to life. So it, it's, it's the same concept of Giacometti sculpture. So Giacometti is trying to recall the, the spirits uh, of the dead, even though the, the pose person is alive, but uh, this is like a reflection of the death of the human. So conceptualize, it's a very similar to the no, no stage. And you think the dead are alive? It doesn't matter they're all alive, but... Uh, they are around us? Hmm? Are they around us? Yeah, we, we are surrounded by death. Even you are right, but you will die soon, not the soon, but someday. <laughs> Please, not so soon. Can we go and, and look at the curtain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. <clears throat> mm. So why did you choose this curtain especially? Because of very symbolic uh, uh, image. No, no theater always comes with a pine tree landscape. As a symbol of the like, uh, the tree, as the god descending into the the symbolized tree, all the tree usually. So this is kind of antenna for the the dead spirits floating in the air. And please you you come. open the window also. Yeah, please come and descend onto this stage. Ah. Then dead spirits. Descend onto the pine trees and then Giacometti sculpture. And why did you why did you choose precisely this work? It's in fact it's like mm -hmm. a, how do you say? Uh, we musicians usually on the stage. Ah. A lot of the the musicians, the chorus people, and sometimes they play the the drum, traditional drum. Ah. So Very. you transform them in Japanese. Yes. So there, Miss Giacometti and Mr. Giacometti mm -hmm, right. and the free musician. Free musician, yes. Oh. And why did you choose her? Uh, well, this is uh, like, uh, two two main characters in the North stage. As, uh, the, so the, she's the main character. Probably this is a love story, ah. and then he. Uh, <clears throat> he he used to love her so much. <laughs> <laughs> and what did happen? Story. What did happen? And what happened is, she she was so beautiful, and then uh, she didn't accept his love. He she said, every night you come to visit me hundred times, the one hundred nights, I I will uh, I, I will give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> 
This man came 99 times, but that 99th night, he got so ex exhausted and he, he died. Wow. That, that's the story. So, that's very romantic, no? <laughs> And my feeling is that the drawing there, can mm -hmm. we go? It, the drawing there, it looks like you. No, not the drawing, the sculpture. This is uh, Mushu Yanaihara, the Japanese guy who is a philosopher who used to be host for for Jack Manny. And uh, but yeah, yeah, but he looks like you. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Can you be in front? <clears throat> Ben yeah, voilà. I I uh, I read his his book. He's a scholar who introduced uh, Sato's uh, text. He translated into Japanese. Ah, yeah. wow! So, so this is a round circle. Uh, yes, round circle. Wow, that's mm. cool. Uh, so I get to know Sato and then Giacometti through his translation. When I was maybe maybe eighteen, nineteen years old. Mm. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Arigatou gozaimasu. Arigato.